So the good news is God is constantly on the move. God is constantly bringing freedom to prisoners, bringing sight to the blind, bringing good news to the brokenhearted. The Holy Spirit is constantly on the move, y'all, and that is good news indeed. It is also sometimes hard news to hear, especially if you like things the way they are. In our Old Testament reading today, Samuel, the prophet and the final judge in the long line of judges, Samuel liked things the way they were. Samuel liked King Saul, or at least what Saul represented. Finally, the Israelites had a king who looked like a king. He was tall. He was strong. He was mighty in war and decisive in ruling. This is what a king should look like. At least Samuel thought that. Yes, he had this little problem with being able to listen to God. He was not the most attuned to the Holy Spirit. But that aside... Samuel thought Saul was a pretty good king. And so he was disappointed when God said, I want you to go and anoint another one, someone else to be king. But to Samuel's credit, he went and did as God instructed, even though he was disappointed. He went out and he, and he went before Jesse's sons. And we almost feel doubly sorry for him when Eliab comes forward, right? So he knows he has to give up on Saul, but here's another one who kind of fits the mold. Tall, strong, mighty type. He's like, maybe I can hold on to that image of, of leadership and kingship. And then God dashes those hopes as well. In the next verse, he says, that's precisely what you have to let go of. You have to change your standards for leadership and kingship. The new standards, the new standards, by the way, look like this little red-headed kid. That's what we think ruddy means in the scriptures. When they say ruddy, we think it's red-headed. So you watch this little, like, red-headed, sheep-herding kid come trundling forward, and God's like, yep, that's the one. That's what it means to be a leader in God's household. You may be small, you may be vulnerable, but you are especially attuned to how the Holy Spirit is moving in your life and the life of the people around you. So fast forward a thousand years. And we think it's roughly a thousand years. King David, probably around 1010 BC. Jesus, probably somewhere around AD 30. So roughly a thousand years. The Holy Spirit is still on the move. This time in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus has announced his mission. I came to proclaim good news to the poor. I came to, to proclaim freedom to prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind. And this is particularly good news to the man born blind in our gospel reading today. And it is particularly challenging news to those who are invested in the religious institutions of the day. Like Samuel, the Pharisees and those who followed them were pretty happy with the way things were. They had built a pretty good institution around the law and the prophets. They were able to make sense out of the world from a framework that said sin and wrath went together and, and obedience and reward went together. And then Jesus came along. And Jesus heals this man on the Sabbath and it throws the whole community into crisis. Surely only a prophet of God can perform a healing like this. But surely a prophet of God would never transgress the law and heal on the Sabbath. The community was divided, our scriptures say. And Jesus, 
like God to Samuel, Jesus to the Pharisees says, you got to change your standards. Or at least you got to have a little flexibility in the system. You got to you got to let go of the certainty that the law brings and embrace a little bit of the relationship the Messiah brings. You got to let go of some of that comfortable structure the 10 commandments line out for you. And you got to lean into a little bit of that uncomfortable fluidity that the two great commandments bring to us. And y'all, you got to let go of wrath and embrace grace. The Holy Spirit is constantly on the move, and those that are, are responding faithfully usually aren't the ones that are the most obedient to the institution. They are the ones that are most attuned to how the Holy Spirit is moving in their lives and in their community around them. And so fast forward 2,000 years. The Holy Spirit is still on the move in our communities, y'all. And in this iteration of the story, we got to be aware that uh, we kind of resemble Samuel and the Pharisees. We like things the way they are. We enjoy our structure, our certainty, our standards of tradition. And y'all, those are good things. Lord knows we need holy order in our lives. But we also have to be aware that those standards of tradition, tradition can also be blind spots for us when the Holy Spirit is doing new things in the community around us. We have to be aware that, hey, that may be a good idea, and it's outside anything we have ever seen before. And so to that end, I invite us to, to look around our communities. Actually, let me step back a second. So I say that because I think the Holy Spirit is on the move in particularly new ways post-pandemic. I spent a little time with a whole lot of unchurched people over the last decade, particularly veterans and outdoors folks. And 10 years ago, they all squarely fit into that category of nuns. Y'all familiar with that terminology? Not the, the habit wearing NUNs, the N-O-N-E's, no religious affiliation. Or, a lot of the outdoor folks I, I ran with were spiritual but not religious. Y'all have heard that terminology before? And a decade ago, that all fit. Five years ago, that started not to fit so well. And in the last two years, the last two pilgrimages I've led with trail runners, the last couple of hikes I've done with veterans, that doesn't seem to hold true anymore. There seems to be the rise of a group that we could probably call more than spiritual, still not religious. People who are okay with associating with Christ. In fact, yearn to serve the world in Christ's name. And yet are still not really all that interested in the doctrines of religious institutions. People who are concerned with restoring sight to the blind and a little less concerned with healing on the Sabbath. And I think the Episcopal Church is in a great place to learn from people like that. People who are yearning for more Christ-like action out in the community, calling us to step off our campus into the wider community, living our faith. And I think we as an Episcopal Church have a lot to offer those seeking a deeper relationship with Christ, particularly in the, the form of just being. Way to sit and let the Spirit wash over us in worship, in prayer, in study. And so don't hear me saying the Episcopal Church needs a Jesus revolution. I think we are doing really good things. I like the balance of structure and freedom we have. I like the balance of being and doing we embody. But do hear me reinforcing what Michael Curry calls being a Jesus movement. 
being a body of Christ that is active out in the community, trying new things, looking to partner with the Holy Spirit and anybody else out there who's bringing good news to the poor, freedom to prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind, anyone else who is announcing that the kingdom of God has drawn near. And so to that end, I invite you to, to be part of some of those groups that are doing that outgoing work. Uh, and uh, at the end of this service today, we are going to recommission our community of hope chaplains. These are people who have been trained to go out into Sage Springs and Brookdale to people in their homes to bring them Eucharist, to provide pastoral care. If that's something that calls to you, talk to Lynn Boudreau and say, hey, I'm interested in joining Community of Hope. Next week, we're going to honor Vietnam Veterans Day. March 29th is Vietnam Veterans Day. Uh, Alana Trammell and I are going to be working to, to honor those who have served in Vietnam, their spouses, their dependents, that crew. If you're interested in getting more involved in veterans ministries in San Marcos, talk to Alana. Our outreach committee is going to start looking for partners to help us in caring for children and the elderly, those battling food scarcity, those who want to help take care of creation. If that kind of stuff lights a fire in you, talk to Rex Cole or Tamara or Susie Lewis. You know, they'd be willing to tell you more. And in the coming weeks, we're going to do some more worship services outside. We're going to get off campus. We're going to do an Easter service at the San Marcos Cemetery, celebrating the resurrection with all those who have gone before us. Candace Hastings, new, uh, new church member, singer-songwriter, she's going to play guitar at that service at that outdoor chapel. We're going to go and do this parish's favorite activity in a couple weeks. We've got our parish picnic down at City Park baptisms, fried chicken, everything that is good about God, we're going to be out on display with the, the rest of our community. If you're interested in helping me do worships outside in the community, come and see me. I want to make you a part of that. The Holy Spirit is on the move in San Marcos. Come join us in spreading the good news. Amen.